There once was a dock by Ivanki. It was unbelievably swanky. So here's my review. I made it for you. Your MacBook will definitely thank me. Probably. <laughs> Thanks to Ivanki for sending out their Fusion Dock Max 1 for me to review this week. As always, they've not had any opportunity to see this video before publishing, and I've got a lot of thoughts to share about this product. Now, in this review, we're going to talk about why you might need something like this, all the things that this one can do, and also some potential challenges that you might want to consider before making a purchase. Firstly though, if you're lucky enough to own any recent MacBook, you'll know that they are some of the most powerful and portable machines that Apple make. But there's a small USB-shaped problem. If you've got a MacBook Air, you might just get two of these. If you happen to have one of the 2020 models, you only really get one because you'll need to keep one free for charging. If you've gone for a MacBook Pro, you get a couple more, but you'll often find yourself reaching for some Thing like this in order to add some more IO options, which can often mean that your desk setup starts to look like a plate of spaghetti. Not very zen. Now, if you're using your MacBook as part of a desk setup with one, maybe two monitors, you'll probably be needing a dock. And Ivanki have made one that offers almost everything you'll want when it comes to connections, expanding your Mac to 20 ports, including a few surprises. Let's start by seeing what you get in the box. A thing that struck me most about this was that Ivanki have gone for a very premium packaging experience here. Dare I say it? It almost feels Apple-like. Now in the box, we get obviously the dock itself. There's some paperwork, including some cable ties and some strips to stick to the bottom of the dock to stop it sliding around. And wow, this is the power brick. What an absolute monster. There's a nice high quality HDMI 2.0 cable included, and also there's this dual USB-C cable. Bit more on that later. And as we can see, the dock looks really smart. If you've shopped around for this kind of thing, you'll see they all look pretty similar. They're essentially a big slab of metal. The Fusion Dock Max 1 has a bit more of a design aesthetic about it. It does look the part wherever you choose to put it on your desk, and unlike some docks, you're not gonna feel like you need to hide it away. Actually, this kind of floating space-like design is also a practical feature that ensures that when the dock starts to heat up, the heat is dissipated broadly all around it, rather than slowly burning a hole in your desk. Let's take a closer look here at what you get in terms of those ports. Now on the front facing side, you'll see there is space for headphones. This also includes a mic or headset if you're into looking like a helicopter pilot on your Zoom calls. We've also got a dedicated SD and TFF card slot under that, which supports the UHS-2 standard. And then look at all this. There's two USB-A ports, which support 10 gigabits. And below that, we have a couple of USB-C ports. One of them supports 20 watts power delivery. It's perfect for quickly charging a device or passing data data along. When I'm filming with any of my cameras, I prefer not to take the SD cards out as in my view, every time you handle them, there's a danger of them getting damaged or scratched. So I almost always just connect my camera to this part of the dock for transferring large 4K files. And it does that with ease whilst topping my battery up in the process. And then to finish off, we've got two more USB-C ports. Both of these support 40 gigabits data transfer as well as 15 watts charging. And each of them support 6K video too. So all of this is going to be sat on your desk facing you and I know I've got pretty much everything I need here to get charged up and ready for a video shoot without needing to dig around on my power strip under the desk and there's still plenty of ports to spare. Let's take a look around the back of the dock. Now left to right there's a 3.5 mil jack line out if you want to output to some nice desktop speakers and if you have really fancy desktop speakers that take optical audio you'll find a Toslink port next to that. Underneath those we've got a couple more USB-A ports and there's another one up here just in case you are running short. There is a gigabit ethernet port here, a bit more on that later on. Next up you can see there are dual HDMI 2.0 connections. These can both support 4K video at 60 hertz. And then next to that we've got another two USB-C ports that can handle 40 gigabits on the data front and do 15 watt charging too. That means with this dock you can run a quad display setup. That's basically Batman in the Batcave levels of geekery. Now I could be wrong, but I don't think there's any other dock that will let you run this kind of setup from a single cable. I'm going to come back to these last two ports in a second, but just to finish off here, here's a security slot if you want to use some kind of tether to keep it on your desk. And then you've got the power in here, which connects to that enormous power brick. Now, these two ports are a bit clever. Now, on their own, they will each serve up 40 gigabits via USB-C with 100 watts of power delivery. But the cable that iBanky provide essentially offers you a solution that gives a single cable setup, but kind of by cheating. You see, you connect both ends to the dock here, and then the other two are few 
fused together into this little square so that they line up perfectly to this port on my MacBook and then conserve data and power without causing too much of an issue. It's pretty smart. In this part of the review, I just wanted to talk about some of the things you might want to bear in mind if you're considering this and whether you see these as deal breakers will kind of depend on your particular use case and also what kind of thing you're going to be using this dock with. First of all, this thing only works with Apple Silicon Macs. It's got two Thunderbolt 4 chips baked into it and these interface with any M series Mac to make sure that nothing stutters. And yeah, if you're running a PC or one of those older Intel chip Macs in your setup, this will not work. Another thing, if your main use case here is running a multi-screen setup, there's loads of ways that you can configure this, but it will depend on the limits of your laptop. So for instance, if you've got a base level M1, M2 or M3 chip, forget about multi-screen as you'll only be able to run a single display from this at up to 6K at 60 Hz. If you want dual displays, you'll need an M series Pro chip or higher. And again, this will give you 6K, 60 Hz on both your displays. And if you're wanting to go full Batman and have a triple display or maybe even a quad display you'll need to have a Mac with a max version of the M chip in and even then if you want to have a full quad display running the absolute limit of that is three screens running at 6k 30 and a single 4k screen running at 30 Hertz again for most people this will be screen Nirvana but if you are actually Batman and you need more than 60 Hertz in a multi-screen setup you might need to look elsewhere beautiful isn't it? and that should be fine because you'll be a billionaire right Anyway, Batman strikes me as more of a PC guy. The other thing that we should talk about is the Ethernet port. Now, there's probably two reasons that you might need one of these, either for a direct connection to a router for faster bandwidth, or maybe you're using it to manage large files on a NAS like a Synology server. But I've seen a few people complaining about this in forums that it's marketed as 2.4 gigabits, but actually in some cases it's limited to one gigabit. Again, in a lot of use cases, this speed will be fine for some, but if you absolutely need, for example, something that serves up mega fast ethernet speeds like 10 gigabits per second, you might need an additional adapter to run through one of the other Fusion Dock ports, maybe like this one from Sonnet. So there we have it. If you need more ports for your Mac, 20 of them in this case, this thing is like Batman's utility belt. There's something here for most situations and it looks absolutely awesome sat here on your desk. Now, if you're okay with the limits on multi-screen refresh rates and ethernet ports, I'd say this is a pretty essential upgrade to your Mac setup. The Ivanki Fusion Dot Max 1 retails at £336 or about $440, but they're often running special offers and they do have some smaller scale docks in their range if you only need a few extra ports rather than the full 20 on offer here. If you're interested in picking this up for yourself and you want to be kind and help support the channel, I'll make sure I leave any links and codes down in the description. Folks, if you enjoyed this one you might be interested to know how I've been using my MacBook alongside my iPhone using one of the very latest Mac OS features. It's a bit of a game changer actually. There's more about that in this video over here. See you next time.